Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a new wood stove from Pomali known as the Dweller. So let's get started. Alright, so to get things started, this is a stainless steel stove from Pomali. It is made of 304 stainless steel, much like the Arokan stove from Pomali as well. I'll give you guys a 360 degree view of the storage bag. So you'll notice that there is access only in the front of the bag. So we might as well open it up. We got two plastic buckles there, unfolding it. We have zipper and zipper, drops down, giving you guys a good look at the stove there. And then we have one more buckle up top, which finally releases the stove. So let's get this stove out of the bag. The bag itself is very useful. You can store the stove inside of it to transport the stove. You can even store little compressed bio bricks for fuel or firewood inside of the bag once you're already at camp. Or if you're in a vehicle or a camper, you can store all your wood in there, close the lid and kick it off to the side. So there are multi uses with the bag. Let's talk about the stove now. All right, so let's take care of some specs really quickly and get that portion done with. The weight of the stove is coming in at 10.4 kilograms. And I'm just reading this off my phone really quick to you guys. So 10.4 kilograms for the total weight. That's with the pipe and the stove. That is not terrible for a car camping stove. So I will mention this is not for backpacking. It's meant for van campers, truck campers, RVs, uh, even hot tenting if you're out in the car kind of travel in the woods or whatnot. This is meant to be transported with a vehicle, not in a backpack. So please keep that in mind. Uh, the folded dimensions in inches. So that's as you see it right here is 12.6 inches by 8.66 inches by 12.99 inches. Now, if we set the stove up, meaning deploying the legs, which I'll show you in a moment, the dimensions then change to 12.6 inches by 12.6 inches by 16.54 inches. It is made of 304 stainless steel, and each chimney section weighs 100 grams or a quarter of a pound. That's not terrible. So those are the specs that I have right here for today. Let me show you guys the legs on this first of all. So we want to tip the stove upside down. All the chimney pipes are stored inside right now, so it is going to clang around a little bit. We have one major leg right here, the whole width of the stove, and then we have two little kickstand legs that fold down. Now while we're under here, you guys can see a little vent underneath the stove, which is activated by this little switch. So it is a bottom feed stove, and we'll talk more about that once we actually get the stove totally set up. Standing it back upright, you can see now the footprint has changed as the legs do protrude out to the sides. And it is a little bit taller. All right, so here we have eight individual sections of stove pipe. You'll notice that they are rather short as they do store inside of the stove. All eight sections fit inside of the stove. Now one section is also a built-in spark arrestor. So you wanna put this guy up towards the top. It does have a stamped in cap there, so it does prevent any sparks from going up and out. It helps break them up and it helps anchor the pipe in the wind as there is an additional piece which I'll show you later on in the video. So we do have eight sections of pipe. They stack on top of the stove. Very simple, no tools needed. You stack one at a time all the way up. Today I'm probably only gonna put maybe five on there. I don't need all eight. So let me get this set up and then I'll show you guys the front of the stove and we'll get inside of it and have a closer look at it. All right guys, so we'll come in for a close look at the front of the stove to go over some details with it. As mentioned earlier, down here we do have a slider that opens the vent on the bottom. Lefty is loosey, righty is tidy. So if you want to close it down, you go to the right. If you want to open it up, you go to the left. There are three holes underneath the stove that open up with this switch. Looking underneath the door, we do have an ash pan. This cannot be pulled out with the door shut. So that is a safety mechanism. To open the door, we come over here with this clever latching design. Now we went with this latching design rather than a standard gate latch because when this is in a vehicle, if you press it shut all the way, it's not going to come undone hitting bumps off road in your truck or your van. So if we open up the door all the way, this ash pan then is totally removable. And we also have the spark arrestor anchor piece right here, which is for guying out in high winds. So from this side angle, you guys can notice that there is a false bottom built into the stove. There are all kinds of slots cut into it, so all the ashes can fall through, landing directly in to the ash pan, which makes very easy cleaning. 
There's also three little prongs here to stop any wood from falling out when you open up the door. There's also a little baffle up at the very top as well as a double wall design at the back of the stove. Okay, so this angle here is looking up inside of the stove. So here's that top baffle. Above that is the exhaust through the chimney pipe. And in the back here, you'll notice this double wall design. It does have holes up here to help burn wood gas. And it, it, it also adds some thickness to the back of the stove. So there's not a lot of heat transfer going out to the back. And it adds a lot of rigidity as well. Looking down towards the bottom of the stove, you guys can see the intricate cutting in there for the false bottom. Removing the bottom tray gives a little bit of a better look there. So this is where all the air comes up to burn the stove and the ash falls through. With the tray in, the air still swoops around the ash pan and it still breathes inside the stove. So there's no, uh, there's no choke in the air with this installed or uninstalled. Having a closer look at this door latch design, you'll notice that there is a fixed screw here. The handle does open all the way, so when we shut the door firmly and lock that in, it's a very firm press and a lock, so that's going to stay locked. Like I was saying, if you're off-road going over bumpy roads and you happen to have this installed in your truck or your camper, this door is not going to come flying out as easily as a traditional latch system would. So you do need to pull that up, the door comes ajar, and then you can load and then close it nice and firm, press that all the way shut. At the very top of the door, there are cuts all along the entire top and it's activated with these two screws. So there's one here, one on this end. What this does is it helps breathe through the front, but it also introduces air down along the glass, pulling all the smoke off the glass. So this should stay nice and clear while you're burning. You can either open it all the way, shut it all the way, or choose your desired setting anywhere in between. So the top of the stove has two permanently fixed carry handles. These are also very useful when putting things on top of the stove. They're not going to get bumped off as easily. On the side, you guys can notice the hinges here. One thing I do want to cover is the door is removable. So if you do want to take the door off, open it all the way, pull the glass off, and that'll help you clean the glass a little easier or maybe clean out the stove a little easier. It's very easy to put back on. The entire body of the stove is put together with screws including the glass so if the glass needs to be replaced by any means you can pull that out and replace it the glass is tempered just like wood stoves in your home as well so i will say that is very very strong stuff the entire top of the stove is also screwed together and they are all countersunk giving a nice smooth finish so whatever pots and pans you do have on top they're not going to get snagged on any screws giving you a little bit of room up top to do some cooking for a small pot and a small pan or a kettle so before we get the wood stove burning, I do want to cover this accessory here. This slides over top of the portion with the spark arrestor, and it lands in this little groove channel. It has three holes in it, so if you do want to connect some guy lines, which I highly recommend if you're going to be in a tent, connect some guy lines as well as maybe a truck, a camper, an RV, wherever you've got the stove and you've got full sections all the way up and it happens to be windy, this spark arrestor guy out accessory is going to be very handy. So that's what that is. Now it is time to get the fire burning inside of the stove. So I'm going to get this loaded up and get it burning right away. All right, so I'm using a DIY waxed pad for a fire starter. I've got some dry kindling in there, a mix of hard and soft wood. I have the top vent on the door wide open and I have the bottom vent totally wide open. We've got a very, very nice tall flame inside of there, which means this stove is going to be extremely stable when burning. So we'll let this go through the preliminary stage of catching fire before we load in larger pieces. All right, so far so good. It's actually got quite a roar to it. I know it's a little difficult to hear today with all the wind, but it is roaring quite loud and it sounds pretty awesome. So while that's taken off, I might as well do a comparison of size on top of the stove. So this is a 750 mil titanium pot. I chose this pot because it's probably the most common size used by outdoorsmen and women. We'll prop that up top so you guys can see there's plenty of room for I think even four of those. So one there in the back, one in the front, one on either side, and probably even a 450 mil in between. So there's loads of room up top to boil water. You could put a kettle, a small pan, cups, pots. There's loads of room up there to cook with. And as mentioned earlier, these handles help with uh, them not falling off. Basically they're bump guards. So if you do have two or three pots up there, they're not gonna fall off the side and create a mess inside of your camper or your tent. 
So here we've got a top-down view of the stove, just so you guys can see a little bit of the layout if you want to cook on top, moving your pot across. That should help you guys judge the size up here and the usability of the stove for cooking. All right, so, so far I am extremely, extremely pleased with how this is going. It has only been burning for about five minutes and already we've got some really nice coals. I'm only using five sections of stove pipe, so I do have three pieces of pipe that are not being used right now. And it's still creating a very, very good draw. I still have the top vent all the way open and the bottom vent all the way open. I'm going to load in some wood now and then we'll start playing around with the draft setting and some of these features here to see how responsive the stove is. So I've got some softwood here and I've got two pieces of hardwood. We'll add another piece of softwood and another piece of hardwood. So let's open up the door and let's just load all of this in there all at once. Get it really stoked up and let's see how it responds to all of that wood being in there at one time. So if you guys look very closely right here at the pattern of this smoke, you'll notice that it is going down and off to the side, but it will not go up. That's due to the top vent at the very top of the window being wide open, forcing air in and keeping the smoke down, resulting in a crystal clear viewing window. If you guys look very closely way in the back up towards the top where those small holes are, you can actually see the wood gas reburning itself very, very clean. All right guys, so it's been about three hours total burn time. The stove has just stopped burning. I just emptied out the ash pan. That functions no problem. The handle's still a little warm, but as you guys can see, everything functions totally proper as it should. No warping on the stove that I've noticed. It is still very hot though. It's going to take probably a good 40 minutes to an hour to cool down. Um, I had that thing loaded, way overloaded full of wood. And I put in some really nasty pine resin wood in there trying to get the stove glass to turn black. And it stayed totally clear. So if I could shut the door here for you guys with a glove because it is still very hot. You guys can see that glass is crystal clear. Very, very good performing. So. What I would recommend with this stove is a good chunk of hardwood this size. Piece of wood that big would probably burn for at least two hours, even on high. This thing just burns wood extremely efficiently. I'm gonna be doing more testing with it, of course, but that right there is the size of wood that I would put in there, shut the door, and let it do its things for easily an hour and a half to two hours. That burns very efficiently. The vents in the back reburn the wood gas, so once it, the fire kind of falls below that line, you'll see it start to jet out of the back. And it gets extremely hot in the front and very hot on the top. I did not notice a whole lot of heat throwing from the side or the back, nothing from the bottom. But my hand within 14 inches of the glass was very uncomfortably hot. It was actually burning my hand 14 inches away. The top, I could probably get my hand till about here till it was uncomfortable. So the majority of the heat goes forward and upward. So making this very safe in close quarters, such as a truck or camper. Uh, that's basically all I've got for you guys. So this is a first look at the new stove from Pamali. I'm going to let this cool down and get it packed away. One thing I do want to mention before I go, I only use five sections of pipe. So if I attach the three other pieces of pipe to create a longer section with more draw, it would burn even cleaner and more efficiently. So I'm actually very surprised with, I don't know, about three feet of pipe on there. It burns super, super hot and very clean. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of the new stove, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.